What's up guys, Gaines with Gertz here. Quick video on how your ankle joint is everything when it comes to human movement. So what I have is I have a box, you can use a couch or any object or even a wall in front of you. And I'm gonna get into a half kneeling position to assess where my ankles are at, okay? Particularly your ankle dorsiflexion, dorsiflexion, okay? It's, it's how far can that knee or the shin, this tibia and fibula go forward over the, uh, the talus or the, ankle or the foot bone, right? So what I'm gonna do to assess that is I'm gonna get into a half kneeling position barefoot. My heel is gonna stay in the ground the entire time. My foot is straight towards the box, everything's squared up. And I'm gonna start about you know, an inch away from the box and I'm just gonna go touch the box with my knee, keeping my heel flat on the ground, okay? I'll slide back about a half inch I'll go touch the box, making sure that that heel stays flat in the ground. I'll slide back another half inch, test again. Now I'm at about two and a half inches, okay? And I'm gonna go and I can already see, you guys can see my heel starting to come up off the ground, right? So I'm at about two and a half inches is my range of ankle dorsiflexion. Now, three inches is average, okay? If you wanna optimize your performance, more than three inches is necessary because everything starts with human motion from the foot up the kinetic chain, right? And if you're restricted here in this joint and its ability for your knee to travel over your toe, it impacts a lot of different things that you can do inside the gym and in any type of sporting activity. So what can we do to fix it? I'm going to show you two different ways to approach increasing ankle dorsiflexion so that you can squat more comfortably so you can jump higher so you can do all the things that uh, everybody wants to do to perform better let's check it out all right so your two options when it comes to assessing um, and fixing the ankle dorsiflexion or lack thereof you do both sides okay test both ankles and, and get an inch count on how far that toe was from the box now next thing i want you to do is i want you to go back into that limited range that you have right find it and then let you know Figure out, is it coming from here, the back of your calf, where you feel the restriction, or do you feel more of the restriction in the front side of your joint? That's going to dictate what we do next, okay? If it's coming from the front side of the joint and you feel any type of impingement or restriction and that ability for that knee to keep traveling forward, then we're going to do a different set of drills to address that. If you feel it in the back side, right, in here in the uh, Achilles tendon maybe, or even in your calf, we're going to do different drills to address that okay so the front side that's more of like a joint mobilization issue right i need to find a way to mobilize the front side of this joint constructively so that my ankle has better range of motion if it's on the back side the posterior compartment of your lower leg then you're going to have to do stretches and different type of soft tissue work in order to increase the flexibility and pliability of this tissue on the back of your leg right there's a lot of uh, plantar flexor muscles, the soleus, the gastroc, the plantaris, that can restrict your ability for that knee to travel over the joint. So if you, if you do this and you feel that restriction on the front side, like I do, we're going to cover that first, the joint mobilization drills you can do, and then we'll get into the second part, which would be the soft tissue work that you can do to increase ankle range of motion. Now, what if you felt it with both? Okay, if you felt both impingement on the front side and some tightness in the back side, then you'll just do both set of drills that I'll show you. All right, let's check it out. What's up, guys? Let's check out the first drill I would have anybody do for joint mobilization for ankle dorsiflexion, right, to improve that range of motion. Now, you're just going to need a, a resistance band, okay? You don't need a ton of tension. And what you're going to do is you're going to anchor it to something behind you, get into that same half kneeling position that you were in, with your ankle range of motion test, and you're just gonna band that talus bone that I told you about, right? On top of your foot, right? Make sure that that band is sitting on top of your foot, pulling your, the top of your foot back and down, right? That's what you want. And what that does is it stabilizes the talus as I do pulses into the end range, forcing ankle dorsiflexion to occur, right? By anchoring, the talus and pulling it back and down, I'm looking to get an increase in my range of motion and to kind of systematically increase that tibia and fibia's ability to glide correctly over the foot bone like it should, right? So I stabilize the talus, 
and then I press forward into my end range and come out of it. You'll do about 10 to 15 breaths, okay? Focusing on that knee tracking correctly over your big toe, okay? And then you can go outwards with it if you want and hit 10 to 15 over your pinky toe, and you can even go 10 to 15 to the inside of your big toe, right? So you're kind of hitting, here's your foot, here's your knee, you're kind of hitting midline, inline, and outer line, okay? All while trying to get more range of motion in ankle dorsiflexion from that band supporting the talus. So you'll do two to three sets of this for about 10 to 15 pulses in each line, and uh, you'll do that on both sides if both ankles need increases in range of motion. All right, so let's talk about soft tissue, right? If you found that the restriction was coming from the backside or posterior compartment of your lower leg, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do some myofascial release, okay? Trying to release tension in all of this tissue back here with just the use of a kettlebell, okay? So what I'll do is I'll put one foot over the other to apply pressure into that posterior compartment of my lower leg, and I will just slightly roll back and forth trying to find spots where it's really, really tender, okay? Just like this. I'll do this for about one to two minutes on each side as needed in hopes that I can release some of the hypertonic tissue or super, super tight stuff that's on the backside, ultimately restricting your ankle range of motion. So do this, and then I'm gonna actually show you guys how to train into a third bonus to this video, train into the range, because as you increase that ankle range of motion, it's very important to train in that range of motion so you can maintain those gains. All right guys, the last step to opening up your ankles is to train in the range that you've just opened, right? You've seen an increase in ankle flexion and now in order to maintain that, okay, we need to train in it, okay? We also need to stabilize the new range of motion that we just created, right? Because your body's not used to having that additional range, so it's important that you stabilize it to prevent injury okay so best way to do this is just with a kettlebell goblet squat calf raise and i'll demonstrate it for you real quick i'm going to be training in that dorsiflexion that we just opened up and i'm going to be activating my plantar flexors and my calf muscles at the same time right so i'm training not only in a gym specific way and improving my squat pattern but i'm also increasing the function and structure of my ankles, okay? So check it out, I'm gonna drop into the bottom of a squat, okay? And I'm using this goblet position to act as a counterbalance so I can get into a vertical squat which requires my knees to travel over my toes, requires ankle flexion, right? And from here, I'm gonna do a calf raise and return my heels back down to the ground, okay? Trying to activate that dorsiflexion once again. So calf raise and then flatten my feet out. Calf raise, flatten my feet out. Now try these and you're gonna feel a lot of pressure on the front side and back side of that joint, which once again is phenomenal for increasing the function of your ankles. So do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be notified weekly when we release new videos. And best of luck with your training. Thanks so much for watching.